it's not super hot. And the dragon wings. You can see in the back, so they've got wings. I can show you my back. Yes, I, I actually have dragon wings. I keep forgetting that. Dragon demon wings. Yes. So. Okay, so a couple of updates for this week. This is 824, not going to Burning Man, sadly to say. In a way, it's a sigh of relief because the aftermath of it is like if you're going to only do one event a year and you, you love cleaning up your suits and getting rid of the uh, playa dust and try to anti-corrode your equipment. I remember talking about that some before, uh, doing furry stuff and making things bulletproof and stronger so that it's designed for longevity. I go pound, 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 next event, next event, next event, and you're making it stronger and stronger. So... Burning Man is no, you know, it will take everything away. From what I hear, you wear a shirt, it's stained permanently. It's like playa dust is so alkaline, it's like putting a strong bleach on your clothes. So from what I understand, I gave my friend some tips to anti-corrosion. Hopefully this stuff survives a little better. Um, he doesn't have conformal coating on electronics. I meant to do that on his vehicle, just spray it with stuff after you, uh, you hit, hit it. Because a lot of the heat shrink tubes we use, they help because they seal, but they don't actually make a watertight seal. You need marine grade stuff. So I wanna, if I do future pro co-op projects with him, I will definitely buy um, everything that's weather graves. I, I was not really prepared when I met him. He showed me the bike ideas. Then he showed, introduced me to Burning Man. Then I finally played and told him, I'm a furry man. I know all that stuff you guys do because I've been in that fandom in 10 years. He joined around 2017. I didn't know that after he uh, divorced his wife, uh, all bets are off. I'm the other way around. I may be getting a wife soon. I don't know because I have an eccentric lifestyle and maybe it's time to settle down. I still love my dragons. I mean, I have managed not to pop for another one, but that does happen. Pop happens, you know. You pop a few dragons, you keep it extra spare. You know, that you have pop-prone toys, you keep an extra spare in your basement. <laughs> uh, I am always referencing the uh, Venture Brothers quote about the uh, boys never die. Look it up, boys never die. If you have death-prone kids, you keep an extra spares in your basement with the same synapses and everything so they can start all over every night. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that Drakey, I still love them. I have extras, very little extras. And it might actually go to someone. Why? Because I think he needs a new hard drive to get his computer running. And I'm going to have to have a talk with him on that. Maybe a one-on-one. -on -one. Because he seems to be like... I don't know what people think. Maybe because I just decided to cancel this trip. You know, so I'm actually a little more happier. It's a sigh of relief. I don't have this big chest over my weight. Um, it's like going to your first fur con. You don't know what to expect. The type of people you're going to meet. I ran through the same thing when I went to my first paranormal conference. I was like... I want to go and not go. When it was at Queen Mary and Darkness Day was hosting the events, um, I remember I was like, okay, I need to wear a suit and tie. These formal people, my underdress. I, I've had people say the same thing that I showed them some of the fun parties we have at um, there. But, you know, a picture is a thousand words, but experiencing is another story. You go to the parties at conventions, it's another story. I mean, and, and not limited to furry conventions. When I was at IWCE, I was hanging with Bob, and he does his own private thing, but just me and him. I think the last year we went there, I stayed late from there, and I said to try to do my own thing. So rather than getting directly back to a hotel room, I hung out with the staff at the event. And then after everything closed down, they had the drink hour with the engineers. And I started chatting with the engineers, and I was surprised at how many crazy projects they have. They're no, they're no different to you and I. Um, Bob thinks, oh, you got to be very formal. It's all di diplomatic. It's like... Well, if he's doing it already, you can't do it. So that's why how I loosened up and I learned to loosen up. But in a nutshell, before I end this call and go out to the swap meet early for once, actually at 7, which is going to be odd. I might find something cool. I don't know. One guy actually offered to allow me to sell some stuff at his booth. So I might just carry out my computer with me just to see if anyone wants it um, for like 40 bucks or so. But um, maybe, maybe. I'll throw it in my car, actually. See if anyone wants it, and I'll swing by and, and stuff like that. If anyone wants to sell a computer for that price, whatever it is. Um, but all I know is uh, uh, is that since I'm not going to Burning Man, it's kind of a pity because a friend did pay for it, resold it to someone else. 
paid him the difference. So hopefully, so you didn't lose any money, but he's still kind of bummed out because I seem to tell a lot of stuff. And I says, I don't know RVs. I just happen to make two and two together when my brain's working and piece it together. So I'd definitely be an asset to a team, but I just don't feel like, you know how it is, fur cons have, I shouldn't say died for me, but maybe it's time to go for a re relationship type route and maybe do that route. And I think I was in a relationship. I, I, I don't want to admit this guy, Wayne, even though we're mostly talk business. I had a chat with him the other day and he definitely is liking the artsy stuff, but when I showed him the fur, furry stuff, like the toys we have, and he goes like, oh, Paul, Paul knows where to sell on Amazon. So he's definitely a business guy. But I think it's because his mentality is, he's grew up in a sort of a, you know, in the American dream type, but he's kind of leaving it between that. He's kind of like me. The artistic side of things is that you have radical include you have radical inclusion as they call it burning man so same thing with furry we supposedly don't deny anyone for some reason except for people who vote with the r in their name you know so i just came to him why i got canceled he didn't really get the story last time then i told him it's political that's why and then of course there was kind of a change in tone he finally called me by my real name actually um yesterday the other night and that was surprised me but we had a good time together, and even though we, I, I will find out later if he wants to do future projects with me, commission projects. I don't mind doing light artistic commission. I, it's actually fun figuring stuff out and troubleshooting and making it more durable. I mean, I don't mind being like Q and, or the guy in the bat cave that fixes all your gear that you never, almost barely ever see during the uh, off hours before the Batmobile goes out. Yeah, so I'm kind of in that opportunity now. I'm just not actually out there as much as I used to be. Drake Dragon, you know, he gets out there more, and he gets he makes it to pools more than I do actually at this point. So, so I might actually I le left him with a plush Drakey, so I'll be there in spirit, and hopefully it doesn't fly off of his truck. But hopefully he gets some pictures with Drakey and and riding around. That would be kind of cool to see actually that Drakey made it out to Burning Man, but I didn't. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things where. The sigh of relief for me is that, and he did say the first time I did it, I camped. I says, if I was 10 years younger, I would say anything goes, folks, because I'm trying everything. And now I'm like, after watching some of the video, the washout days, being prepared for that stuff, okay, it's just something I don't need in my life. It's like people saying, I don't live in Florida because there's too many hurricanes. Well, you get used to it because it's part of life. The dust storms at Burning Man is part of the Burning Man experience. I understand it. See, the thing is, I've grown to an age where experiences like those aren't the thing. Like some of the artists that, could, that can't redo my tail and stuff like that, even though they did the best job possible the first time, and everyone's doing something different or gives up when they go like, I think I backed myself into a corner. Says, how do you back yourself in a corner? You unback yourself out. You figure it out. You take a break, grab a good dinner or lunch, and then start coming up with ideas of solving the problem, and maybe that problem might just work. I mean, I don't, it doesn't have to be, I'm not asking for an impossible solution, because I have a picture and videos of solutions that people have done in the past for me. Someone said you couldn't land a rocket, a rocket on its rocket boosters. Well, that was pretty impossible to do, but apparently someone pulled it off 10 years later. So, so I don't mind the weight good things come from people who do wait but what I do mind is the fact that I'm kind of not in the party mood anymore I really am I mean he has a good margarita bar and I love to see those machines in actions I hope everything runs great for them the power distribution that I worked out in the math to make sure they have proper generators to run everything seems to be good so from there I don't know if if um, if everything's gonna be a problem or anything like that I mean I've worked with so many equipment, there's always something that can go wrong, but um, Godspeed to them, and hopefully they have a great party for three days, no hitch with their migrated machines. I had extra extension cords, but most of mine are 10, 15 amp rated, so they'll probably get a little warm on that long cable run on a hot day. Most of his stuff is uh, industrial grade stuff he bought. As long as we have the right adapter, I think he can pull 30 amps into the line and actually run all those machines. Um, the machines, from what I can tell, both of them together is probably at least they, they have a 25 amp breaker on them. I don't think they draw 25 amp, but that's about 
I guess they used a fuse because they're fast blow, but whatever the case is, that was kind of the odd in the service manual because they're, you know, they're, uh, what do you call it, um, I, it, most machines have to have a spec, but they're commercial grade products, so they usually have a little more power than a T lock plug or something like that, mainly because sometimes they need to go for the higher power to get cold really fast, but that, those machines look really good, so uh, he tested them out, he had a party, I missed that too, but I was out of investigation, otherwise I would check too. I would have said just run it on the generator for an hour to see if everything runs good. But we made all the numbers, calculated everything. He calculated the amount of uh, amount of uh, ingredients he's going to need to take up there, anything like that. So everything seems to be in order. Um, I'm sure Wayne's a good guy. He's he he can make it happen. Um, he's more of a businessman. I'm kind of a businessman, but secretly a furry. You know, I'm not a closet furry anymore. I mean, if someone asks me, says, yeah, I'm a furry. Big deal. It's like I'm a biker, and it's like, oh shoot, you're a biker, you're a criminal, or you know, I'm a lockpick smith. I'm so many things. I've done a hacker too as well. I'm not so much into that as much, even though some of the hackers are really, really good today. So they get my respect, and everyone says, oh my god, I got hacked into. All, all bets are off. It's like, for me, it's like, you know, I'm impressed that it took them this long to figure around some of the uh, pilot securities, and nothing is hack proof. But I have learned that if you just keep things up to date and on top of things and good backups, you'll you'll never have a problem. You know, you just restore a backup, whatever. But yeah, that's that's my spiel for that. It's like my life so far, you know, this is why I really need a place of my own. That's why I'm just saving my money. I hate to say it, it sounds bad to some people, oh you're you're bloody rich. I says, No, if I was bloody rich, I'd have a house. Well, actually, no, the scenery kind of proves that. I'm sorry about that. So, you yeah. know, yeah, I know I bought the, the most expensive one is that green dragon behind Drake over there, uh, inflated Drake. Um, he's uh, He was bought at FFA, and because I was able to whip out a checkbook and, and donate $666.13 to Safari Sanctuary, I didn't get to see them this year because they didn't have an FFA. I might drop out of their channel soon because even though they made me staff, it's just not worth it doing any of that stuff anymore. Um, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm tired of stuff, but I do get backaches. I do need a little beer at night from time to time. Talking to my friend Shingy in Florida, he's he is growing up a little bit more, but last minute preparations for his project I almost ain't worth it. I mean, I really need to be there a week ahead and we need to come up with some game plan and a way to make the stuff happen and make the stuff more easy to work with. As much as we can do custom code, it's just not worth it to do that anymore. I hate to say it. Um, quite of the fun things that I do, I might present it to other people. They say, oh, yeah, I need a turnkey solution. Sure, I can provide you a really cheap turnkey solution. All you have to do is turn my key, and I will start my key, start my motor, and I'll, I'll take off with it. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things where you start to realize, you know, the people who talk business, you know, like, for example, Varkos, um, I know he's probably got me blocked, he might unblock me in the future, but the people who talk business and are creators too, even though they know of the unusual stuff that goes on in all these fandoms, they just like, okay, you know, move on, which is fine. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to notice riding toys aren't really going to be my thing anymore. I don't know. I hit 40, and I might consider a sell-off. I hate to do a pop fest, but someone has suggested it. Let's do it on camera. It might attract a whole other fan base, but... <laughs> I mean... I mean, if you look at some of the date stamps on, like, IYRU, I think it's 2006. So... I shouldn't say I've grown up or grown out of it. I don't want to grow out of this. I'm actually pulled out my Renaissance stuff and dusting it off and noticing that it hasn't cracked, which is good because it's been stored in the shade. Um, I've been told if you spray leather with uh, mink oil, you can make it last longer. So I might just do the whole thing with mink oil today outside and spray it down. My friend did lacquer on his bike over the paint job as well as that. And boy, does that thing look like it's a whole new bike. The shininess of it, he cleaned off all the LEDs. I think it was perfect. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, it's probably got some errors he missed, but you know, that's human That's human analog. But you know, that's the part of artistic is that it's not about being perfect, it's about doing it. And it comes out pretty cool. 
So I'm gonna. He's probably mostly inspired me now that I need to rebuild my tail. Maybe either instead of getting, I'd love to get it mass produced just like the Drake toys, because even though they are considered what you call mass produced type stuff, but anything mass produced is still hand, is still man made, and man made just means that that artist that created it, for most places you'll never meet. Some rare occasion you'll meet the idea that created the I person who owned the IP, but it's very rare you ever meet that. If you go to like the small and mom and pop shop, you'll definitely meet that. But anyhow, I gotta go to a swap meet, you know, the monthly swap meet, the dying TRW, it's free to get in, so the radio guys are there. I sometimes walk it, maybe I'll bring a computer with me to throw on the bench if anyone wants to buy it. Um, let it go for whatever and split the cash 40 bucks with it's got Wi-Fi on it Windows 10 so or I don't even know right now I might just leave it on the bench so I've got so much stuff might be a good spare computer for someone like Bob and I says yeah Bob just take the spare computer I, I I think I might go back to the giving route at the end of the day so keep a look eye because thanks to Wayne he introduced me to the Burning Man community and it's the art of giving and 10 years ago I would literally have done the same thing but today I've got a goal and when you have your goal and your uh, goals in sight whether it's a plus one and I know my family wants to help me with stuff but they're not going to help me with the stuff behind me I mean they're annoyed enough when they had to do the clean up and the water damage and I'm still cleaning up stuff. I rescued a bunch of stuff in storage here. I blew up some toys right now, which, yeah, I know, 40-year-old, that's actually blowing up a 10-year-old, a 20-year-old baby toy. That's what someone would say. But the only person who would have understood this hobby very well would have been Trigger Happy Squirrel. May his soul rest in peace. He was a good guy, and even though he was in a shit ton of debt, I didn't realize it. I am. Um, you know, but you live and you learn. Wayne's a good guy. I think when Wayne gets back from this trip, I'm going to have a formal apology. I have a really big one for this, actually, because he's trying to get me into something that I would have literally gotten into 10 years ago. But after going through all my adventures of furries and stuff like that and road trips, I'm kind of road tripped out. I still like to do them. The last one was USS Hornet. That was an interesting camping trip. At least it was inside the boat. The boat was actually pretty cold, but we set up camp on the uh, barracks, which was a little bit stinky. So, but I was able to tolerate that. And the uh, the piss house, aka the bathrooms, were, you know, you just go in there, do your business, maybe brush your teeth while you're doing your business, standing up in both directions, and then you just leave. But it's the other floors. They're a museum, and they hosted a paracon there, and that was kind of fun. I kind of not I lost the invites it's political but um, yeah all the other stuff that's going on you know around me it's like I, the reason why I'm in the mood like right now I'm in a good mood I just got up in the morning had a little coffee might grab a snack or two before I leave this time um, but what's really happened is is the fact that I'm actually home alone so I've actually had time to think and reorganize my thoughts rather than having to rush and get out because I have someone has a difference of opinion of my lifestyle. So, like, this is too much for a lot of people, even though I love the big, hairy, chinny chin chin type look. So, uh, yeah, Drake is, Drake is like, uh, that's my name, by the way, it's Drake. So, if you want to call me my real name, because that Facebook shows my real name, that's fine. But I am Drake the Dragon for most people, and in spirit, mind, and soul. So, you know, and whenever people call me by that, I smile and I actually have a great time. You don't call my real name, I just like, okay, nod my head. So, but I, I hope I didn't lose a friend, but, you know, we've been friends for very long. It could be we could just take us another nice long five-year break, and then he's five years later, he's done with Burning Man, and we meet again, and he's now doing more business-related stuff. But I think... That's how hobbies happen, actually. You need something to fill the time in your day. You get to the point where you sleep a lot. You get up on the correct schedule to meet up for meetings, whatever. So now you're on top of your life. You just need something to do something different. you know. So that's usually where things go in. But because I live with a family that's 
had more than family members disappearing left and right. My uncle passed away recently last fall and we're losing people left and right on the Phantom. They're in the mid 40s. So my family's actually freaking out. They have every right to. I'm 40 right now. And I always said I only live, plan, plan to live to 45, but you know, that gives me the opportunity to think about all the stuff I can actually get done. But then if they want me to settle in and live to 75, then they want kids. And I hate to say it, you know, the people that I think I can get along with a lot better um, either has to, A, have a respect for the crazy stuff I do. I mean, finding some do, they just either brush it off and, you know, that's what he likes to do, he likes to do. Some will try to get into it. My ex was that way. She wanted to try a few Paracons, so I went to a few. She also tried a few other things, but it wasn't really her type. When we went to some furry parties, they were pretty crazy, so... You know, you know, I don't judge them, but they were interesting stuff that you learn that people do. So, but, you know, that's human nature. Internet Rule 34. If there's a, if there's a version of it in the internet, there'll be a porn version of it somewhere, somewhere on net. So, just remember, we have a lot of kids that are somewhat between 20 and 30, and you were that age one time, and you were very eager to try anything that turned you on. So... Don't get me wrong, but being that I'm a lot older now, I am kind of just trying to just get by now. That, And if I can ever put my own roof on my house or afford to in California, remember California, the, the down payment of a house is actually most people's lifetime savings in the world. So, So don't even think about putting a house here so on the floor because the government's going to try really hard to take it away from you unless you can somehow prove to the government your house is worth nothing so you either be like my friend live in a pig pen and they come and assess the house they'll ignore the house they look at the land or you have high crime in your neighborhood which lowers the property value of the house the land but you have a higher chance of break-ins so when you when you put it right down to it, California ain't really the best place anymore to live. It just has perfect weather. But then Florida, we have air conditioning. Texas, we have they have some tornado storm. They have better construction. Florida just look pick a low flood factor area like a Polk County is actually inside of Tampa. You need job, you know, you're a mechanic. Maybe you go work at a theme park. There's plenty of opportunities there, as well. The smaller the neighborhood is, you have more of a town. And if you're an opportunist, all you have to do is go to the board, get yourself a cheap-ass business license. It's only $100 a year, really. It's not that expensive. You do trademark and all the other stuff, depending if you use a turnkey solution versus a non-turnkey solution. Um, you can start another business. And from what I understand, you just have to have that mindset to create, get enough customers, advertise. Every now and then, you're going to get one of those bad customers. You just bite the bullet, you know, get them off your plate as fast as you can you know and just carry on and for most towns and places if you make a couple of kilobucks a month you could easily live in a quadplex you know and have your spare time and whatever and do the normal things creatures do today but it's no California you're not gonna have perfect weather you're gonna have rain days you have sunny days you're just not going to have what California has where there's a good amount of customer base, but none of them buys any of that stuff. Most of the people in this customer base right now, I'll tell you one thing. All of my favorite stores are closing right now. The only one that's left is the electronic store. I get, um, I think they're the last distributor in town, unless you go straight online and mouse or any of the other distributors online. The smart guys are going online, but the guys are local or trying to try to keep the local businesses alive by bringing them more business which is why I don't get paid for my worth anymore, which is why I don't even volunteer anything. Unless they want a turnkey solution, maybe I can supply the turnkey solution. But the minimum order is going to be 100 pieces or so, whatever it is that, you know, I can make a little percentage back on it. You know, I'm learning to, if someone says, you need to learn to invest, there you go. You know, you invest, I go through the trouble of procuring materials and stuff for a project, a team, whatever it is, and get my cut there. Small amount, you know, as long as I'm in the positive direction, and IRS is happy, and my bank's happy. My wallet's good, you know, 
I'm more than happy to do it. If it's not really that, it has to be something I do it as gifting. But you know, in order to gift things to people, you have to have extras. And that's how gifting, at least from the way I learned it, you know. The other way around is gifting because you're a supporter, but then you become a supporter. And when you become a supporter, you're at the borderline of bartering. Bartering means, you know, you're expecting something in return. So, but if the other party can't return something that you like, you stop supporting. So it doesn't matter if they have the materials you need, you're going to avoid them at all cost. So that's why things like construction materials and everyday good household goods are always, no matter how bad everyone says Walmart is, or how bad they blah, 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 treat their employees, really the employees that treat themselves bad actually, but at the end of the day, they carry household goods, not specialty goods. And because of this, they don't have to tailor to anyone. Well, actually they do, it's called their investors, but yes. So that's pretty much why everything is the way it is and why last best four years was 2017 to 2018 when I decided to get a house because I knew that. Now I should have gotten it earlier before the water damage or just reported that first that probably would have saved 90% of my stuff and then we would have an emergency move everything to another room before it got wet. They didn't really get wet, but what happened is that when the temperature drops, because I you kept the temperature at 80 all the time, so that's probably what kept my stuff fresh for many years. But when we turned the heaters off because they want to do the room and save electricity, yeah, um, condensation developed in all my stuff. And because of condensation, it develops anywhere. It doesn't matter if you have a clothes or shirt. Anything drops below 10 degrees, 20 degrees below the current temperature will condense. So it condensed, and that's where all the mold grew. So I'm pretty sure everything in my closet has got some sort of mold spore on it, enough of it. So if you're allergic, you come to my house, you're going to start sneezing and wheezing. I, whenever I open the closet, I still wheeze in there. I already have dehumidifiers in there. Close the closet for a day, run the dehumidifier, uh, run the filter and dehumidifier, everything is fine in this room. But I like my plush apparently survived because I think they moved it out of my room really quickly, but we left the closet because we didn't think the water got into the closet. But I was wrong because there was a flood on the carpet level. It, it made its way anywhere where the carpet was touching and it was connected into the closet. So I I vacuumed it up the, uh, this, this break and I managed to... Uh, use carpet cleaner and stuff so that seemed to have helped but you know you never know so um, the dehumidifier is still pulling out moisture in the air in there which I don't get it because it's a closed room so unless there's another leak somewhere which I suspect it's probably behind the box I'm gonna be pretty sure that as soon as I move out of here and I get to the bottom of the closet and pull those boxes out it's gonna have black shit underneath it just like my other boxes in the other room did as well I, that's something I don't expect, but once again, when you get a water leak, it's probably underneath the, the carpet and, and travels through the concrete. When my dad put the uh, flooring in, he did seal it, so that's probably helping from the leak from reforming, because I believe it's coming in from outside and seeping through. But I don't know if uh, if if this is actually truly sealed, because when we moved in, it was clay outside. It was dry dry clay outside. So when it rained, the only thing it did was barely leaked because California never pours rain like crazy. And when it does, it just sprinkles. So the majority of the water gets pulled through the gutter. And everything else stays pretty well dry because the roof, I think, hangs over about three foot on the side. So, But until they started putting plants in, that's when all the problems started to occur. So I'm fairly certain they had trouble getting water to the plants. So they started putting in plumbing out there for watering the plants. And that excess water going through clay is seeping in. So because they haven't watered literally in three weeks now and most of the stuff has dried out I'm still getting humidity I have a sensor that's behind me that's pulling humidity so but anyhow I know I have a long rant um, I gotta run talk to you guys later